Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. We don't even need the uh, warning here, the disclaimer, because all we're going to talk about here are things not related to fighters winning fights. We're just going to throw our two cents out. I don't think the people running boxing hear enough from the fans. Let's try to help the sport hit higher levels right? I believe one of the best traditions in boxing, we've talked about it in other videos, is the ring walk into the ring, right? You know, in an earlier video, I talked about how I was watching, still remember it, Vitaly Klitschko on short notice, fight Lennox Lewis years ago, and how Klitschko in a fight that was being held in LA came into the ring with really an anthem from an earlier generation, the Eagles Hotel California, and how it was so jarring that when I got to work, um, you know, the next work day, um, you know, I was talking to a colleague and we were both laughing and totally into the fact that Klitschko came in the ring to the Hotel California. Well, Derek Chisora, has chosen the Hotel California. Uh, Derek Chisora for a ring walk. Derek Chisora is extremely popular, right? Fans identify him with a warrior. I think that ring walk song really helps the fighter set the mood for the crowd, entertain the crowd, entertain people at home like me watching the fight. Let me also say too, you know, it's a personal decision for the fighter. You know, I'm not here to impose my views on fighters. I want the fighter to pick whatever song they feel is appropriate for their persona. But what we do here online is we offer second opinions. Let me also say too, not everyone following boxing is straight out of high school, is 19, 20, 21, right? Many of the people at fights are older, right? They're the ones who can afford the tickets, for crying out loud. Many of the people are older. And while I know these young fighters, the fighters themselves often are in their 20s, want whatever's playing at the clubs, whatever is the anthem of the moment for their generation, right? My bias is for fighters who actually pick older songs. Many of you thought that the best song picked by a fighter coming into the ring was Crazy by Patsy Cline uh, that was picked by Tyson Fury when he fought against Deontay Wilder for the heavyweight championship, right? After he was coming back from boxing Siberia, problems with regulatory bodies, two fights against unknowns, uh, people thought that ring walk was memorable you know, because many of us watch these boxing matches with our own families, we don't have the opportunity to talk to other boxing fans. Let's use this forum to do that about the things we love. And I get the feeling that many of the fighters think they need some rapper whose song you don't know, whose words you can't hear, uh, walk in front of them, and that we're going to look and say, oh, that's that rapper who is popular in the moment and we're all jumping up and down for that right i have noticed some fights where some guy comes in and he has a rapper and you know parts of the crowd are energized and stuff like that i prefer the um, fighter who comes in has some song from the past like crazy and you think to yourself oh that works you know has imagery and stuff like that, right? Hotel California works because it's either, <laughs> and the Eagles won't say, by the way, Don Henley refuses to answer the question. It's either one of the most elaborate drug songs that made it onto AM radio back in the day. If you're from the 70s, you know what I'm talking about. Mirrors on the ceiling, the pink champagne on ice. And she said, we are all just prisoners here of our own device, right? You understand what I'm talking about. Or it's an analogy to 
you know, just an unreal world. Being in kind of like an adult house of pleasure or horrors, however you want to see it. Perfect song, memorable song for a ring walk. Well, let's talk about two of boxing's blessed. These fighters are extremely talented. More importantly, they are more talented than many champions in boxing. They are loved by fans. These are the fighters who can make mistake after mistake, even big mistakes. And you still love the guy. Right? I'm going to name two. Let me just talk about the power of celebrity. How life is unfair. I'm watching the Manny Pacquiao fight against Ampo. Right? You know, I'm just watching the fight. I'm just another fan looking at the fight on TV. Then suddenly, there's Ryan Garcia in the crowd. I thought, oh, Ryan Garcia is at this fight. Then I thought to myself, wow, why am I cheering Ryan Garcia? <laughs> you know, didn't this guy blow an opportunity to fight for a title by three and a half pounds? Then, of course, we find out he has designer uh, drugs in his system, right? In other words, this guy is cutting corners on a major level, right? He has a promoter who's a boxing Hall of Famer. He has a trainer who's one of the very best in the sport. Uh, you wonder how much this guy thought about the suspicion he would, you know, have the public um, have the compromising position that he would put his promoter and his trainer in by his self-centered actions, right? Needless to say, he got suspended for a year. Um, you know, I'm just telling you life's unfair. Right? You have another fighter who remains a fan favorite. He, of course, got busted for clenbuterol. Right? I'm just telling you, in the 70s, Ali showed up one time to a press conference. He had uh, a beautiful woman on his arm. Of course, Ali was married at the time, not to the beautiful woman on his arm. I'm just telling you, some guys are playing by their own set of rules. Right? Life is unfair. Ryan Garcia, whatever you think about him, he is a cash cow in boxing. I have no doubt people turn out because they hate him. I have no doubt people turn out because they love him. I can tell you I've watched a lot of fighters give post-fight interviews. Ryan Garcia's post-fight interview after the Oscar Duarte fight was magnificent. Right? This is a guy who senses the moment. Uh, this is a guy who, you know, whatever mental turmoil he's having, whatever uncertainty in his life he's having, however preposterous the statement is he's making, and he's made some racially charged statements. Right? We're going to look at him. We're going to forgive him. In a sense, he's kind of like Babe Ruth, right? A guy who was running around town. You know, uh, at one point they said to Babe Ruth, do you think it's right that you make more than the President of the United States? And Babe Ruth's response was, well, I had a better year than he did. Right? I mean, understand, guys like this, there's going to be a sizable part of the crowd that loves them. So, let's offer unwanted advice to Ryan Garcia. First, let me say, at these boxing matches, they have a video board. And, of course, you're there to watch the fighter, and they put fight highlights of prior fights on the video board. Right? What I want to do is to have boxing, have individual fighters. They have power in terms of their contracts, what they ask for. This is kind of like rock stars who don't want green M&Ms. Right? They have power to say to the people around them, I want this done this way. In other words, you want me to fight at this event on this card? When I enter the ring, this has to be on the scoreboard, right? On the display at the arena, right? What I want boxers to do is to consider actually giving the musician credit, 
rather than have some self-promotional video of the fighter himself in past fights on the scoreboard, let's make it deeper. Let's actually entertain the over 30 crowd. If you've picked a song, if you've picked Crazy by Patsy Cline, why not have on the video board a video from Patsy Cline singing the song or just in her life, right? Why not let the crowd know, you know what, this song, there's the singer, right? Understand what would happen, why this is good for the sport. You're going to have people enter the ring and they're going to say, hey, I want the Eagles on the scoreboard as I walk into the Hotel California or Life in the Fast Lane. I'm surprised nobody's picked that song as a walk-in song. Some of these guys who've <laughs> had problems, right? Well, understand, many of these older musicians are still alive. You would actually, you know, shine a light on them. Some of them are actually going to show up for the event, right? I remember a Tito Trinidad fight where Fat Joe and Big Pun, who's no longer with us, came out and were in the ring as Puerto Rican Felix Trinidad entered the ring in New York City. Big moment, right? Big moment. I don't understand how the sport of boxing loses if the athlete picks a song, then has the group on the board as they walk in the ring, right? If I pick a song by Bruce Springsteen or by Slick Rick, Right? You don't think that these guys who were giants back in the day might not think to themselves, hey, let me show up in New York City or Newark, New Jersey. Picture Bruce Springsteen at a Shakur Stevenson fight where Stevenson comes in to Born to Run. Right, The athlete would have to, <laughs> the athlete would have to have a sense of history including the history of their own state and who's from it to pull off the kind of thing I'm talking about. So Ryan Garcia returns to the ring after a year-long suspension for being busted for a designer PED, right? Returns to the ring after, of course, chugging a beer after a weigh-in. All eyes are going to be on him because all eyes are already on Ryan Garcia. He's a cash cow. He's already wealthy from the sport of boxing. And his actual fight resume doesn't quite match. Let's say a Terrence Crawford's. So what song should Ryan Garcia enter the ring with? Let me make a suggestion right here. From the 1980s. This song, believe it or not, used to be an anthem. Huey Lewis and the news is, I need a new drug. Right, folks, I'm just telling you, given Ryan Garcia's problem and given that song, which is a crowd song, right, even if the song is before Ryan Garcia's time, that would be a moment for boxing, right? I don't want to see Ryan Garcia's video up as he walks in the ring no knock to ryan garcia if you're at a ryan garcia fight you probably already know his highlights no i want to see Huey lewis in the song from the 80s the video the actual video where Huey lewis at one point 80s were out of control sticks his head in a bucket of ice that's what i want to see Right, folks, the crowd would be laughing. It would be memorable if Garcia delivers in the fight. It would be talked about after the fight. Let's name another guy. Talented. You, the fans, love him. Let me point out, too, that um, these realizations of who the fans love really are hard earned. Um, I didn't know Anthony Joshua was as loved as he was. 
I was just making videos on important fights coming up. And Anthony Joshua, the Olympic champion, was an important fighter. And then suddenly I realized that if I said ABC123, if Anthony Joshua's name was in the title, I was getting probably two times to three times the views I normally get. I also realized, too, that, you know, if I criticized him, and keep in mind, I criticize fighters, as I like to say, this is not a fan club site. It's really about boxing. Right? I can personally like the fighter. If I think the fighter's at risk, I'm going to tell you. If I think the fighter doesn't deserve the odds, I'm going to tell you. Right? We're trying to beat the casino. The casino makes money off of fandom. We don't want to be fans. We want to be gamblers. Right? Well, understand, I would make hard lines about Anthony Joshua, a guy who didn't have a lot of fights at the time. And, wow. The, you know, I would then look at the comment section, and back then, I didn't get as many comments as I get now. I would see a bunch of comments for the Anthony Joshua videos. I was like, what? What's this about? Then I'd be reading the comments, and people would say, hey, man, you know, how could you say that Anthony Joshua is big and clunky? And there'd be several comments like that. That's when I realized that I was dealing with you know, one of these guys who is loved, right? I mean, you know, you, you know the moments, you know the fighters, right? Ray Leonard, uh, when I was growing up, my goodness, you know, you got the feeling Ray could rob a bank and would still have a huge portion of the public defend him, right? Manny Pacquiao, people forget how popular Pacquiao was. Pacquiao was more popular than Floyd, in my opinion, we all lived through the era. Well, that's who Anthony Joshua is. But Joshua's even more compelling than that. Right? Understand, Joshua was working with um, Carl Froch's trainer, McCracken. And uh, then Joshua decided to change trainers after he ran into turbulence. Right? So Joshua then went through a few trainers. So now Joshua has found a trainer who has his own strongly held beliefs. I don't believe Ben Davison likes fighters who switch from righty to southball. Right? Understand, in the Crawford Madrima fight, both guys switch from righty to southball. Right? Understand, you have some very, you know, skilled technicians in the sport. Um, Jaron Ennis, who switches from righty to southpaw you know, who is really ambidextrous. Ben Davison doesn't like that. Understand, too, Joshua went through a stretch. Joshua blessed Puncher. I know there's some out there. Joe Parker, I read the interview where he claims Joshua doesn't hit that hard. I know Lawrence Acoli picked two other guys as um, harder hitters than Joshua. Right? Okay. We understand there's a difference of opinion out there. I think Joshua's a blessed puncher. Right? But Joshua went through a stretch where he was fighting people like Jermaine Franklin. Franklin's not running. Franklin is dipping and diving in the pocket. Look at the film. And he goes the distance against Anthony Joshua. Right? Robert Hellenius was coming off a fight. Hellenius makes it through the first half of the fight against Anthony Joshua. He's not running. Right? You have to ask yourself, can Hellenius run? Right, so Joshua was looking for the right mix. Then he finds Ben Davison. Right, he leaves Derek James. He finds Ben Davison. He finds the mix that clicks for him. Joshua looked magnificent against Otto Wallen. That's one of the best Joshua performances I have seen. He looked magnificent. He looked spectacular against Francis Ngannou. Right now he's fighting Daniel Dubois. Dubois is coming off of his biggest win of his career over the guy I still feel is the heir apparent, Philippe Ergovic. Right, Ergovic, uh, let's just say lost that fight. Right, he looked beaten up at the end of the fight, at a minimum. 
And Joshua's the favorite over Daniel Dubois, who, of course, beat Jarrell Miller before he beat Zergovic. Right, so what? I know Joshua has done everything right. He comes in, you know, Caroline, which the crowd loves. He's identified with that. But if, if Joshua wanted to change that song, there's no reason to. I can see Joshua is, in my opinion, the cash cow of the heavyweight division. Right? There's no reason for change. But if he wanted to change the song to something that's actually more reality-based, something that actually relates to his life, what's happened, the idea that he was an Olympic champion, then he's the heavyweight champion, then he falls off the perch, thanks to Andy Ruiz. Then he goes soul searching. Now he's back. Right now it looks like he's in a position where if he beats Dubois and if, big if, Tyson Fury wins the rematch over Usyk, Joshua has the chance to finally fight Tyson Fury in a fight that many people would view as the top fight at heavyweight. So if you're Anthony Joshua, you have millions in the bank, you're already popular, the fans have followed you after you've lost the title, everyone sees you coming back, you're held to impossible standards. Right? People like me are talking about how Franklin went the distance against you. In other words, you know, if the other guy just goes the distance against you, even that win is not going to be enough for some critics here on YouTube. Right? And of course, I'm, <laughs> I'm being a bit biographical here. Right? Autobiographical. So what should Anthony Joshua enter the ring to? Folks, I believe the song is an old song. Again, older generation. Right? Joe Cocker. The song I'm thinking of is With a Little Help from My Friends. If you don't think that song would get the crowd out of its seats, if you don't think the image of Joe Cocker talking about getting by with a little help from your friends with Joshua walking into the arena and up to the ring with his current crew that have helped revitalize his career, then you're kidding yourself, right? That would be a moment, right? Let me also say too, I know the crowd knows the words to Caroline, I get it. The older people in the crowd would know the words to this song, right? With a little help from my friends by Joe Cocker, understand, Joshua, of course, could get the latest rapper, right? He's a big name, you know, he could have whatever music he wants. It could be modern, you know, young people straight out of the club could hear and could say, oh, that's so-and-so, oh, right? You know, it would it would bounce with young folks. I'm talking about something different. I'm talking about timeless songs where the fighter is actually thinking about not what's popular, but what's descriptive of where they are in their journey, right? Understand, Ryan Garcia could downplay the I need a new drug by just saying, look, I don't support drugs. I still maintain my innocence. It was just my way of saying, hey, I need a different approach if people were thinking of me that way after the failed drug test, right? Joshua could simply say, look, you know, I appreciate the guys who have helped me get this next opportunity for the heavyweight championship, right? Folks, it would be powerful. Let me also say too, you'd have some other people, people in their 70s in the crowd <laughs> who if they knew there was gonna be a moment like this, 
where Joe Cocker gets back on the main stage, even in video form, singing an iconic song that he sang at Woodstock. Right? I'm telling you, if boxing starts this tradition of shining a light on uh, old singers, even those who are no longer with us, you would have a group of people in their 70s at the arena wiping their eyes during the ring walk. Right? In fact, the ring walk for many of them would be the main part of the night out. Right? They'd be at the Joshua fight thinking, wow, you know, He's going to come in. I wonder what he's going to come in with. I've heard that it's going to be Joe Cocker. I need to be there. You know, I was at Woodstock or Grandpa was at Woodstock. <laughs> and uh, this is a moment. Not only that, it would shift the focus too. Where you would ask yourself, who are his friends? Then you would notice the work that Ben Davison who has other champions, right, has done in helping Joshua get back to a position where he has a chance to be on top, right? Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. Marry some traditional songs or even new songs with fighters and uh, tell us why in the comment section of this YouTube video. As I've said, you know, I'm not sure if the powers that be in boxing, many of them have been in the sport since the 60s, right? Bob Arum is still involved with top rank, right? You know, Frank Warren has been around for years. I mean, years. Um, I'm not sure if these promoters have fully heard from us, the fans. I'm not sure if the fighters have heard from us, the fans. You know what I mean? Let me also say, too, that sometimes you see guys entering the ring <laughs> and they pick a great song and the crowd is disinterested. Maybe the crowd's too young. Maybe the crowd doesn't know the fighter well enough. I saw Bernard Hopkins enter the ring one time and he entered the ring to my way, right? I did it my way. If you knew Hopkins' career, you thought, wow, this is a major moment for it. Right? The crowd was disinterested. You know, um, Prince Nassim Hamed once came in to Michael Jackson's thriller, I believe it was, and um, he had all these props. Player, you don't even need the props. Wouldn't that entrance, and it's one of the legendary entrances in boxing history, wouldn't that entrance have worked even more? If he just comes in and he, you know, walks in the ring with his entourage and on the scoreboard, they have Thriller. They have Michael Jackson's Thriller playing on the scoreboard, right? You know, if in fact you contact the artist beforehand, maybe Michael Jackson would have even attended the fight. He's no longer with us, but he was alive at the time, right? And he wouldn't have to perform. He could just sit there. He could, you know, be on Nassim Hamed's side of the ring, not at the fighter. Or the fighter, if the fighter's a showman, on his way into the ring, could stop, turn, see him, nod at him before he enters the ring. That would have been off the chain. Those are my thoughts. I look forward to yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.